What's poppin' YouTube and welcome to my channel, Ashley Finesse. It's your boy Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie back with uh, another video for y'all. And this video right here we're gonna be talking about if you have Venus squaring Pluto or Pluto square Venus. And I'll pause for the cause. If you don't know how to find your aspect placements, if you don't know what an aspect is, if you're a new subscriber, if nobody puts you on as to why it's so important that you have to look at yourself through astrology, study yourself through astrology, and overall love yourself through astrology and numerology, don't worry, I got you. There's a couple of videos, I'll put the link in the description. You have to watch them first to become hip to the knowledge of what I'm about to talk about right now. So if you look through your birth chart, or your natal chart, it's the same thing. And you realize you have your Venus squaring Pluto. This video is for you and for me because we both have the same aspect, the same Venus squaring Pluto placement. So I relate with y'all. I resonate with y'all on a deeper level. I focus with y'all heavy. But this video is for us. I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna be saying us a lot in this video. So without further ado, Dizzy, let's get it popping, shall we? All right, so boom, Venus squaring Pluto, Pluto squaring Venus. First of all, what does a square mean in astrology? What does a square mean to you personally when it comes to looking at your birth chart aspect? Now, a square, like I said, talking about it scientifically or mathematically, is when two planets are 90 degrees away from each other, causing an aspect called a square. And now, a, a better example we could use so you could visually see what a square is, is you can look at a, a four-way intersection. A square is when one planet is on one side and the other planet is on the other side and they're all they're both trying to cross or go through at the same exact time causing friction not having a balance it's called a negative or harsh aspect because it makes you as an individual feel the tension feel the feel the negativity feel the harsh harshness of these two planets trying to cross at the same time these two planets trying to both exert their power or both exert their Dominance at the same time causing a misbalance and um and friction when it comes to you as an individual Now we already know what, what Venus rules Venus rules the second house and the seventh house So it represents money how we spend our money what we like to spend our money on our values Represents partnerships relationships. And it's not gonna be in this, in, this, in this video I'm not gonna only be talking about like relationships as in love and all that but also partnerships and relationships when it comes to people in general just relating to people in general so seventh house second house our value how we value ourselves relationships partnerships money what we spend money on and how we attract others and what and who and what we're attracted to now we already know that pluto represents the eighth house pluto represents anything scorpionic pluto represents birth and rebirth and death and destruction and the underworld and anything that's dark or anything that's taboo but also res also represent resurrection and transforming and going through the shits. I would say to become a better person, to become a new person, to chance to totally transform yourself and become new again. So, what does it mean when you have Pluto, the planet of death and destruction and transformation and darkness, squaring up or squaring, both trying to cross at the same exact time? Venus, the planet of love and beauty and, and attraction and, and money and, and partnerships and relationships. So now, like I said, I personally have this placement. So I'm going to be talking to myself a lot in this video too. And uh, there's nothing easy having this placement. So I'm just going to start off by saying that what happens when you have Venus and Pluto squaring each other? So first of all, like I said, Venus represents our self-value, how we value ourselves. It rules the second house and the seventh. So when we're talking about the seventh, the second health as second house aspects of ourself, it rules our sense of value. So what happens a lot, or what happens mostly that I've noticed, uh, a lot of times in our early, earlier times of life, earlier parts of life, when it comes to relationships or relating to people, a lot of times we were vulnerable before and had our sense of value tarnished or had our sense of value, our self-esteem kind of messed up in a way that a lot of times from that plutonian aspect coming into our relationships and partnerships from that plutonian aspect coming through when we were vulnerable in that aspect or vulnerable in that position a lot of times in our earlier times in life earlier parts of life pluto and venus squaring each other will cause us to have hardships or have difficulties when it comes to relating to people when it comes to relationships with people partnerships with people and also our self-esteem in a way 
if we're not aware of what's going on, if we allow this this harsh aspect to play out as we're getting older, if we allow this harsh aspect to play out as we're maturing in this lifetime. Like I said, we were um, a lot of times we're vulnerable in the past, so it could play out in different ways. I'll give you an example of one way it could play out is you could be so, we could be so afraid of intimacy. You could be so afraid of being close with somebody. We could be so afraid of even becoming a partnership with somebody, friendship with someone because of what we felt in the past. Like I said, Pluto and Scorpio, they always have like a grudge they hold because of the pain they felt. So when it comes to things that happened in the past, Pluto holds on to it for a long time and they remember that feeling for a long time. And because of this, they put on a defense mechanism, they put on an armor, they put on a don't talk to me, they put on a don't, don't do this to me because I'm afraid that I might go back to that place I was in the past. So a lot of us can put on a defense or an armor to the max because of that fear we had of being vulnerable, because of that fear we had of having our self-esteem tarnished or having our vulnerability tarnished in the past. So with this placement, a negative about this placement, and I'm still working on this, like I said, I'm going to give you all different examples, but this is, this is one example of how Venus, Venus square and Pluto can play out. A negative, this is a very negative of this placement, is we can be extremely guarded to the max. We could be extremely, put our armor up to the max, put our guard up to the max of trying to become in relationships with people or partnerships with people because of that Pluto aspect, that past aspect, that what happened in the um, what happened in the past aspect of what happened to us when it comes to partnerships and relationships. And what happens when you always have your guard up, when you always have that armor up? A lot of us will have a type of Plutonian attraction, like a magnetic attraction. We could be naturally charming and all that, just like naturally. So we will attract people, but then they'll start to notice like, damn, this person is really defensive all the time because of that fear. This person doesn't really open up all the time. So we can repel people because of this, or we can attract people that also have their guard up or that also are ready to battle. Because when, when you have the armor on, when you have that guard up, it's like you're ready to fight all the time. So subconsciously, we can attract people that are also about that battle life, about that war life, about that, that also want to go to battle with us subconsciously. And then those type people, us being in relationships with them, that's where the Venus square Pluto relationship that dynamic comes in, which is we can mistaken obsession with love, we can mistaken intensity and that kind of OD obsessiveness as that's what love is kind of thing. So for us, a lot of times when we're in relationships or partnerships with people, we can always be too, we could either be too dependable on someone else or want someone else to be dependable on us. There's no in between because it comes comes down to that control factor of Pluto always wants to be control. Pluto wants things to Pluto wants to dominate so much. So us being afraid of being vulnerable, we could always want to either have full control of that relationships, which could come off as being manipulative over that person who's always trying to have your way over that person or always trying to run things in that relationship. Or if our self-esteem is not right, or if we don't have that self-value within ourselves, we could be attracted to someone that has that Plutonian energy, that has that Plutonian di dynamic about themselves, attract someone that's gonna always be controlling over us, attract someone that we're gonna always be obsessing over and wanting them so bad and they're not really treating us well, but because the self-esteem is not right, we'll stay in that relationship or stay in that partnership and kind of be taken advantage of, but it's so intense and that person is everything and that obsessiveness, that tug and pull of that person is being controlling over you or manipulating you in a way, but you're staying in it because that toxicity low key is low key attractive to a Venus square Pluto person if their self-esteem is not right. They will look out, they'll look elsewhere, they'll look outside themselves for that self-esteem boost from someone that's not giving it to them, but they kind of obsess over that person or is really intense in that relationship over that person if our self-esteem is not right. And like I said, another part is if our self-esteem is right, we could be the type that can low-key be manipulative over that person, be super controlling over a relationship or dynamic, be mistaken obsession as love. Like, oh, that person obsessed with me, so all right, so I'm good, this is what I need it. If that person's not obsessed with me, then it's boring or if everything in a relationship is too easy, if everything in a relationship is too, is too quiet, it's too peachy creamy, it's too like, you know, good, then low key it's boring or we gotta find something to spice it up. Like always looking for an intensity moment in a relationship dynamic when it comes to displacement. 
So understand what's happening is that planet of Venus, Venus is all love and beauty and everything is all peachy creamy and everything is beautiful and attractive and harmonious and Venus rules Libra, which is harmony and balance. And then Pluto's coming in like now I'm coming into uh, passion, uh, passion, drive, obsession and destruction and resurrection and all that like that. Plutonian energy wants to come in at the same time. So with this placement, we have to understand that the friction we're feeling, a lot of times we have to sit back at ourselves too. Because a lot of us, and I, I bet in the comments I'll be reading it and I'll peep it, a lot of us don't have the best of luck when it comes to relationships, the best of luck when it comes to partnerships. And what can we what we can mistakenly do is blame the other person or blame the past or blame outside of ourselves, like this is why because this person did this to me, or this is why because that's what happened to me, yada yada. But the best thing we should do with this placement, and when it comes to squares in general, squares are internal struggles. Squares are something that we have to reflect with inside of ourselves. Is sit back and be like, all right, so maybe it's because I'm too defensive. Maybe it's because I'm doing this. Maybe maybe it's because of how I act in this area in life when it comes to partnerships and relationships. So a lot of times, if we're not having the best of luck in relationships and partnerships, we have to sit back, pay attention to the tension, and, and ask ourselves, why are we attracting people that we attract? Why are we attracted to the person or the people we're attracted to? Like I said, that self-esteem issue. Do we love ourselves first before we're trying to like, you know, be out there? Are we being manipulative? Are we trying to be too controlling? Are we trying to be too possessive? That possessive energy too. Are we trying to be too possessive? Or am I dating people that are always possessive over me? Am I purposely dating people that are always obsessive over me? It's like we have to ask ourselves these questions when we're coming into relationships and partnerships. And another thing about this is that if we're the type to be afraid to be vulnerable, if we're the type to not want to open up like that, understand this. And like I said, I'm still learning this to this day. Like, it's just understand. It's a working process. I'm on a spiritual journey just like y'all, like I always say. But we have to understand that we have to be in relationships. I don't mean by dating, but we have to relate with other people and like be in partnerships with other people. We have to. And that's the only way we can actually transform ourselves. Pluto was all about transformation. So we learn more about ourselves. We learn more about who we are and what we like and how we act around people, how we act in general when we are relating with others. Like I said, I'm speaking to myself. I'm talking to y'all. We have to transform ourselves through relationships. Understand why we're doing what we're doing. Understand why we're attracting who we're attracting. Understand why we're acting while we're acting. Only doing this by relating to others and being in relationships with people. That fear that happens when it comes to displacement, that fear of intimacy, that fear of being vulnerable, that fear of that person leaving you, that fear of things going to mess up, that fear of not going to be in control no more. Like whatever your personal fear is having displacement, like I said, there's many different ways it can manifest. Whatever your personal tension that you feel having displacement is, understand that you have to go inside yourself internally. That fear of you having your self-esteem tarnished, whatever your, whatever, like I said, whatever your personal thing is. Understand we have to go inside ourselves to really hone in on the tension as into why this is happening to me when I'm going into partnerships, when I'm going into relationships, when I'm valuing myself. And in turn, what what a plus with this placement will be is we can definitely be in partnerships and relationships that are actually good for our soul. When I say good for our soul, is like we seek and we yearn for like close intimacy or to like have real partnerships, like real. That is that has no surface value that digs deep into like our soul. We look for soul type relationship. Look for soul healing, soul, soul. Not much, I'm not gonna say soulmate because I'm not only talking about dating, but we search for realistic, real close intimacy, close relationships all the time, to the point that we could dig too deep if we're too picky, if we're too this, if we're too like searching for things that are wrong, if we're always assuming things are wrong we could be we could dig too deep into it but the plus is once you have your self-esteem intact once you're actually able to take off the armor a little bit and be a little vulnerable uh, like i know it's hard but being a little vulnerable vulnerable you will realize yourself transforming through relationships you realize yourself actually being able to damn my life is a little better is way better now that i'm able to relate with other people and be in partnerships and to value myself and to actually let off that guard, let off that armor, actually breathe a little bit, actually understand that things not always, people are not always out to get me, people are not always trying to do this to me, people are not always trying to take my information and then backstab me in the back. Like that fear 
is really deep when it comes to Venus square and Pluto. Pluto has that aspect or has that energy onto us as in taking what happened to us in the past and making us remember that and making us afraid of ever feeling that again to the point that we're just like, yeah, that person's out to get me. I'm not opening up. That person wants this. I'm not opening up. That person's going to leave me. I'm going to be alone again. I'm going to be all lonely. I don't want to be like that no more. Like I said, it could be that self-esteem issue or it could be that thinking too highly of yourself and being so afraid of yourself that you don't want to interact or to indulge with other people, people people's energy because of that fear. But as a quote that they say, they say the most, the thing that you want the most is right behind what you fear the most. So as soon as you get over that fear, that Plutonian fear, you will transform yourself. You will kill the old self of your, of your negative dating experiences, negative partnership experiences, negative friendship experiences, negative self-esteem experiences. You'll kill that old part of yourself. You will be able to understand and know who you are on a truly deeper level by socializing and interacting with other people on an even deeper level and you see how you change and resurrect as a person. You see how you transform as a person with displacement. So the tension is you understanding whatever your personal battle is with displacement, understanding that, damn, I got a problem with this. I attract these kind of people. This happens a lot to me. I'm gonna go in inside myself. Why am I acting like this? Do I love myself? Why am I attracting these kind of people? Why am I doing this? Handling that fixing that, working on that, and it's a very long working process. It's not easy. I'm not just saying this like it's gonna be easy and you could just handle it by tomorrow. But being consciously aware of what's going on, handling that, and try to work on that, and understanding that we only grow, we as in people that have this placement, we will only grow the more we are in relationships and partnerships with people. Not only dating, but the more we actually are indulging in partnerships and friendships with people. The more we have self-esteem, than ourselves with people understand that that is the plus for this placement is we will have true transformation of ourself of our self-esteem of our value the more we are relating with people once we get over that fear once we get over pluto trying to dominate all the time once we direct the traffic and allow things to flow smoothly not allowing them to crash and to tension and to dominate and to mess things up once we allow the flow to happen naturally we will transform ourselves with this placement so that's my video on Venus Square Pluto. Hope y'all enjoyed that. My next video is gonna be on Saturn Square Pluto, Saturn Square Pluto, and you already know I'm about to go in. If you have subscribed to my channel, appreciate all y'all for real, for real. You already know the channel growing crazy. I cannot, I cannot thank y'all enough. You already know how much I fuck with y'all heavy. But if you still haven't subscribed yet for some reason, go ahead, hit a little one time for your boy. Don't forget to drink your water. Mind your business and be safe out here. It's your boy Lil Finesse Jiggy Hippie. I'm gonna see all y'all when I see y'all. Peace.